Hello everyone, and welcome to my Sister Wives For You channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Cody Brown, the father of Sister Wives, has certainly gone through a lot in the last four seasons. He is paying the price, even though his activities have produced consequences in his several families, such as the departure of three spouses. Now, as he approaches his 55th birthday, he must examine himself. He recently disclosed his top priority for the future, living with his demons, Cody Brown. In a lot of respects, Cody Brown has reached his lowest point during Sister Wives Season 19. Years of not listening have now caught up with him, despite his difficulty accepting responsibility for his actions. Mary Brown pushed the release request because she felt it would be embarrassing for him to live with the church knowing that he was unable to keep his wife. Janelle Brown and Christine have also talked about how difficult it must be for Cody to lose three wives in less than two years. In addition, while Cody deals with the hurt and resentment from their failed several marriages, Robin Brown, his only surviving wife, is questioning her union with him. However, in response to his ex-wife's departure, Cody has hit out and shown his disdain. He has said that he wishes he had never married them in the first place. Similarly, he has seen the aftermath with their mothers, which has negatively impacted many of his relationships with his children. But does aging bring wisdom? At age 55, Cody Brown reveals his top want. Although Cody Brown's life has taken an unexpected turn in recent years, many people think that since joining TLC, he has been going through a midlife crisis. However, he promises to change his ways in the Sister Wives episode that airs on November 3rd. On his birthday, he was thinking back on his life at the time. According to him, today is my 55th birthday, and I have with God in covenant form, reasserted myself to from here on out, be the loving father and the dad that has always given me purpose in my life. He also pledges to improve his relationships, saying, onward and upward with the goals in life and making my family whole again. His top priority is unquestionably to make amends with his children. That's what I want, he continues. Even without several marriages, he still desires a large family. Cody Brown also admits, I think I saw myself sort of surrounded by children and surrounded by wives, because I was so naive coming into plural marriage, I guess idealistic. He appears to be a broken man after three wives left, and many of his children are estranged, and he acknowledges that his dream has fallen apart. Then as his eyes filled with tears, he paused to hide his mouth. I literally imagined that my five to six oldest would be living across the street in homes with their spouses, he continues. I mean this is literally what I imagined, I reiterated. Cody Brown and Robin both experienced similar stolen dreams. Cody Brown was mourning the life he always imagined, much like Robin Brown's stolen dream of sitting on the porch with her sister wives. Even though he acknowledges that he regrets his marriages to Mary, Janelle and Christine Brown, he still longs for a relationship with his family, saying, that fantasy all came out of the affection I felt for my children. It wasn't a plural family thing to me. It was just an enjoying my family thing, he continues. He has a lot of work ahead of him. Cody Brown, the patriarch of sister wives, says he wants to make amends with his children, but he has a lot of work ahead of him. I'm hoping that they won't reject this, because some of them won't even talk to me, he admits. But becoming a father again will be my new objective. Similarly, it appears like Robin Brown wants Cody to mend his relationships. I remember the guy that I met, the guy that I saw loving his kids, she says. And I feel like he's struggling with that right now because he's so hurt. She expresses optimism that he would restore his sense of self, but notes that it's not who he is. How do you feel about Cody Brown's 55th birthday reflection? Will he follow through and mend his relationship with his children, in your opinion? How do you feel about season 19 of Sister Wives? Please leave a remark below. Cody Brown, star of Sister Wives, is known for accusing others of playing the victim card. But is he actually the one who has been doing it all along? Fans have been fed up with Cody and Robin Brown's incessant whining for years. They talk about how the ex-wives and their kids despise them in confessionals. Nevertheless, they keep accusing everyone else. Fans of sister wives appear to be over the family patriarch, 
and his antics at this point. Check out their online comments. It seems like Cody Brown is always the victim. Cody Brown undoubtedly accused people of acting like victims this season. He even charged independent Janelle with using the unique victim card. What do supporters think then? Is it all in Cody's head? Or is everyone actually out to harm him? The V card, a Reddit member recently posted online. Who is participating? An AI generated picture of Cody and Janelle playing cards was attached. Other Sister Wives viewers react as Cody holds the victim card in his hands. Redditors posted, Every day of his life, he is the one who plays the victim. What a complete jerk. Yes, without a doubt. He is the one who is acting like the victim. Since Christine's departure, he has been doing it non-stop. He always perceives himself as the victim because he is a narcissist. He must have practiced that statement for a very long time because I don't know anyone who actually speaks like this. Who speaks like this? Janelle has this card that says victim and she likes to play it. The card was created by him. His photo need to be on it. Fans are fed up with the same old thing. Many Sister Wives fans have voiced their dissatisfaction with season 19 on Reddit. Every new episode seems to them to be the same as the last one. Additionally, Cody complains and seems as like everything is against him in every episode. One irritated user commented on Reddit, Every episode feels like I'm watching the same episode again. Does anyone else have this feeling? Like I'm seeing the same thing over and over again, literally? I honestly don't understand the purpose of these episodes. Christine and David get married. As if we already knew the storyline? As in who gives a damn? Nobody is new to this information. Do you believe that Cody Brown uses the victim card excessively? Has the program ran out of fresh concepts for the Brown family? Contribute your own ideas and opinions to the discussion. For the most recent Sister Wives news and updates, make sure to follow TV shows Ace on the Internet. TLC airs new episodes every Sunday at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Do viewers find Sister Wives Season 19 to be too stale? Even after seeing a few episodes of this season, many people believe nothing has changed. Even though the ex-wives aren't given particularly interesting tales, fans nonetheless like watching them succeed outside of polygamy. Fans are already aware that Mary returned to Utah and that Christine and David were married. Additionally, Janelle hasn't had many fresh plot lines, except from telling Cody that their marriage was truly finished. Has the series reached its end? See what admirers have to say by reading on. Fans of Sister Wives are tired of this season. New Sister Wives episodes used to be highly anticipated by TLC viewers. However, season 19 has left many people with a somewhat bad taste in their mouths. In general, fans think the material is repetitive and utterly boring. On Reddit, a frustrated Sister Wives fan commented, Every episode feels like I'm watching the same episode again. Does anyone else have this feeling? Like I'm seeing the same thing over and over again, literally? I honestly don't understand the purpose of these episodes. Christine and David get married. As if we already knew the storyline? As in who gives a damn? Nobody is new to this information. Although viewers of Sister Wives don't always agree, they appear to agree on this subject. Included were comments. For the previous 19 seasons, the slowest show is this one. The same half dozen photos are shown repeatedly, and there is a lot of filler and recap. Indeed, each and every one of their seasons has been a copy and paste job. You really only need to watch the recap. And what's happening next week? We all know that at this point, Cody will say something absurd. Robin will cry. Christine will talk endlessly about finding David. Janelle will be the normal person with a reasonable voice. Mary will go see an old friend or have someone visit her. And Michael T. and Tony will squeeze in as much screen time as possible. I don't believe I'm missing anything that would summarize the previous two seasons. To what extent can the show continue? On TLC, Sister Wives used to be a big source of revenue. However, interest has significantly decreased over the last few seasons. A lot of viewers think the show is dying. They will need to revitalize the show or create a spin-off of some sort. Many people think that Christine and Janelle have been preparing for their own spin-off program. TLC hasn't mentioned it yet, though, if that is actually in the planning. Regarding Sister Wives Season 19, do you agree with the opinions expressed by Redditors? 
Don't forget to add your own ideas and opinions in the comments section below. Every Sunday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, TLC airs new Sister Wives episodes. For additional news and updates, follow TV shows Ace on the Internet. Throughout the highs and lows, Sister Wives star Mary Brown's friends were there for her no matter what. She has been letting go of her polygamous husband, Cody Brown, in season 19. The TLC personality and the latter in church have called it quits on their spiritual union. Mary's newfound self-assurance and sense of humor have charmed her fans in the most recent season. The audience is giving her a hearty round of applause for her amusing responses to Cody and Robin's remarks. With her new life, the TLC star is smitten. Mary is concentrating on her loved ones, her business, and herself. She also has some wonderful friends who never let her down. The reality TV star's friends recently gave her a unique present. What did she receive? How did she respond? Was it to her liking? Sister Wives Mary turns down Robin and Cody's Christmas third wheel offer. In season 19, Sister Wives actress Mary Brown has taken significant measures to safeguard her mental health. She has been questioning Robin and Cody about their strange remarks. The TLC actress recently won over her fans when she turned down an offer from her closest friend and ex-husband. Mary disclosed that, as is customary, Cody and Robin invited her to join them on Christine. She declined to join in their celebration, though, as she saw no justification for doing so. The TLC personality made it apparent that she would no longer play a supporting role in the couple's relationship. Mary felt as though she was no longer a member of the family. She should therefore deal with the uncomfortable circumstance once more. The TLC star's newfound confidence was also well received by fans. Mary's pals have now given her a unique present, sister wives. To start her new life as a single woman, Mary received a beautiful gift from friends. Mary Brown, star of Sister Wives, is currently unmarried. Since her breakup with Cody Brown, she has undergone significant life adjustments. In the most recent season, the TLC personality celebrated her birthday. Mary shared the unique present she received from her pals on her special day. But she was taken aback when her pals Jen and Blair showed her the recently refurbished carriage home. The reality TV star disclosed that Blair Struble, a friend of hers, was an interior designer and her contractor. Prior to the renovations, Brown utilized the area for storage. She therefore intended to convert it into a workstation that would serve as both an upstairs gym and an online apparel store. It was a cement floor and just basic walls, Mary said. She had high hopes for him and was eager to see the outcome. Furthermore, the reality TV personality entered the room to verify the outcomes because she was sure of Blair's job. Mary was taken aback by how her room had changed. Having her own place where she could be surrounded by people who genuinely cared about her made her happy. Additionally, she thought the location was ideal for her. The TLC star went on to say, and I am so happy about the life that I'm creating and the table that I have. Mary's admirers were thrilled that she had at last recognized her value and built a lovely life for herself. It's time for another Sister Wives episode. So put on a purple floral blouse, pause family game night, and prepare to accept no responsibility whatsoever for your own behavior. Christine is holding a dinner for some of her children, including her son Paidon, who is meeting her lover David for the first time in Utah at the beginning of this week's episode. Christine begs her children to please be nice this time and not frighten away her future husband, to whom she is not even engaged, before David arrives and is subsequently mauled by her words. Christine welcomes David into her house-slash-makeshift interrogation chamber, after reminding her children to behave one last time as he knocks at the door. Shortly after David enters the lion's lair, Paidon greets him with Hello Richard, even though that isn't his name. Like 75% of Cody's marriages, Payton's joke fails. But thankfully Christine's kids break the awkward moment by asking David about his impressions of the wedding locations he and Christine previously visited. David, who as you may recall, has not yet proposed to Christine, says he likes one of the alternatives, mostly because of how many people it can hold. Then, David surprises the children by telling them that he and Christine have already informally decided on October 22nd as their wedding date. 
Christine tells viewers that she would have preferred it if she and David had moved even more quickly. Ideally on their second date, when they went to see The Little Mermaid, as her children trade side glances with one another in response to remarks about how quickly their mother and David are going. Before Aspen and Isabel both say, again, that they still aren't used to seeing their mom get her PDA on with someone, especially since they never saw their parents do it when they were growing up. Christine Spawn continued to bombard the couple with questions and comments about their first kiss and what body functions they feel comfortable performing in each other's presence. Christine claims that by engaging in all of this PDA and other such behavior, she is just testing her children, and that they must learn to accept her forcing her tongue down their future stepfather's throat, because it's just what's going to happen. That seems fine to me. Speaking of stuff that make you want to throw up, we next cut down to Flagstaff, where Cody is reminiscing about his marriage to Christine, and the fun times they had together. Do such fun times happen in the same room as us? Despite these purportedly fun and special moments, Cody says he felt so betrayed by Christine's departure that they were unable to stay friends following their breakup. In order to announce that it is his 55th birthday, a joyful Cody later throws himself into the camera. In celebration of what he undoubtedly feels ought to be a national holiday, Cody takes a look back at his interesting life and considers how much has changed since he reached 50. Cody acknowledges that he has struggled with his own principles following his three divorces, and he claims to have talked with Robin about them the night before his birthday. Cody continues by discussing his big picture picture of his extravagant family and how it has subsequently been shattered. Christine Dern that. He did, however, commend Robin for being sweet, kind, and safe. Cody says he has tons of guilt about his broken relationships with everyone else that's out there. Even if he says he's happy living with Robin, King Soul, and the one with the pacifer, indeed by everyone else, he refers to Robin and her dejected eyebrows, as well as the baker's dozen offspring, whom he fathered before dedicating himself entirely to her. Just as you do, Robin claims that Cody is lost and more irate than ever, not just because he is in pain, which is understandable considering his wounded kidney and everything but also because he fears that she will abandon him. Cody continues to discuss his life's purpose, saying that for many years it was all about his family and kids, whom he hoped would always be near him, that is, physically across the street. Cody claims that this idea was more about enjoying my family, which he reportedly no longer does, than it was about having many families. Cody then discusses the prospect of getting back together with his kids, and even discloses that he has made it his mission to do so before his next birthday. Even though David hasn't proposed yet, Christine and David are able to keep their lips shut long enough to go ring shopping the day after Cody's one-man birthday pity party. Even though Christine clarifies that she and David are only looking at rings, she nevertheless responds to the jeweler's congratulations with an overly enthusiastic thank you, since her engagement ring from Cody was a clad band the Irish wedding rings that she and her fellow sister wives used to rock and frequently mispronounce back in the day. Christine reminds us that she has never before gone shopping for engagement or wedding rings. Christine is determined to have a mixed metal ring with a Marquis diamond this time. We are then compelled, for some reason, to listen to Janelle and Mary talk about their dream engagement and wedding rings, despite the fact that nobody is interested in or inquired about them. We also hear from Cody, who maintains that he has no idea whether Christine is seeing anyone. However, he points out that since finding a soulmate was her goal in leaving, Christine is most likely searching for love. David and Christine create their matching edgy rings after taking a trip down memory lane, which includes the same old picture of Christine in her hideous original wedding gown. They then depart the jewelry store to continue organizing their wedding despite the fact that they are still not engaged. Janelle and Cody get together for lunch back in Flagstaff to discuss the unpaid coyote pass. Cody sits down and begins drinking water shortly after Janelle informs him that they must talk about the property because the due date for repayment is approaching, despite his best efforts to postpone it. Because Cody and company signed a really bad contract, Janelle warns viewers that the bank has the right to take back the property in a few months if they are unable to pay the remaining sum. 
This fact should come as no surprise to anyone who has ever watched this show. Although he acknowledges that he doesn't want to give Janelle any favors along the way, Cody, who is still as resentful as his lemon drink, says he knows the property must be paid off. Although Janelle promptly tells him that he has a better chance of winning Dad of the Year than he does of ever sleeping with her again, Cody nevertheless appears optimistic that she hasn't thrown out the possibility of building on the land. Cody boasts about his new friendship with Mary after Janelle assures him that they will never, ever get back together, something that seems to greatly startle the curled one. Then, he informs the audience that he would only make amends with Janelle if doing so would allow him to spend more time with their kids. However, Cody claims that they have excluded him because they are still upset about everything that occurred during COVID when Janelle brings up the kids to him during lunch. In response, Janelle tells Cody that she has always thought Robin and the Chosen Five were the focus of his life, something that both Robin and Cody reject in a confessional. When Janelle explains that Cody's life revolves around his youngest children, Cody cuts in to say, and you don't have little kids, before implying that their conversation has been influenced by the generation gap between Robin and Janelle. In summary, Cody wants Janelle back not because he truly wants her, but rather because he believes it will help him win back his children's favor. Additionally, he wants her to be friends with Robin, and when Janelle refuses, he essentially brands her old AF. Just like you. Unexpectedly, Janelle doesn't stand up and walk away at this moment. Instead, she brings up an instance from years ago in which Cody became irate with her because she had discussed the purchase of the mountain mansion with Robin. Janelle continues by criticizing Robin for allegedly telling Cody about the conversation. Robin claims she didn't rat on Janelle when questioned about the incident, but she later confesses to doing just that. Cody is upset that Janelle brought up the event with Robin because he believes that repeating the past would just cause more harm. For him, of course. Janelle informs Cody that there is no point in carrying on the conversation if she is unable to talk freely. Additionally, she informs viewers that Cody responds in this manner whenever she or her children attempt to discuss Robin, whom she refers to as Cody's sacred cow. We travel to Utah, where Mary and her carriage house provide us with some similarly captivating footage, after Cody is forced to listen to Janelle call his beloved wife a real cow. It's finally finished and ready for Mary and her strangely patterned leggings MLM to set up shop. As you may recall Mary, who is also celebrating her birthday this episode, previously hired someone to renovate the carriage house on the property of her bed and breakfast. Mary informs viewers that she will also be using the area as a place to work out before the big reveal, which is, to be honest, about as thrilling as watching Cody scrunch curl his hair. She even jokes that she intends to put a stripper pole above. Joined by Jen and decorator Blair, Mary blows out the candles on her birthday cake after viewing the completed carriage home. Back down in Flagstaff, Janelle and Cody continue their conversation about sacred cows and other such topics, and Cody finally accuses Janelle of being the victim. After denying Cody's victimization, Janelle informs him that since he has sided with Robin and always will, they will never be able to mend their relationship. Cody denies this, but he restates that their children are the only reason he and Janelle will ever get back together. Even though their religion still views them as married, Janelle goes on to tell Cody that she no longer views them as such. We advise Janelle to study about a small company called Google in response to her further allegation that she is unsure of how to obtain a spiritual release from the church to formally terminate things. Cody eventually acknowledges that he doesn't want to have another failure to his name when confronted with the prospect of being spiritually released from yet another marriage. However, Cody again suggests that he and Janelle sort things out, something Janelle informs him is not going to happen, rather than owning up to the repercussions of his conduct. Cody returns the topic to Coyote Pass after recognizing that Janelle won't make amends for his reputation. Although she would be thrilled to build on the land if money isn't an option, Janelle adamantly tells Cody that she wants the money for her share of the property. Since he and Robin wouldn't want to live on the land next to the ex-wife, Cody asserts that if Janelle were to build on the property, it would set him free to move somewhere. 
Janelle says that it would be better if Cody bought her out once more since she would like to live nearer to their daughter Maddie and their grandchildren in North Carolina. Naturally, this makes Cody wonder why Maddie didn't inform him directly that she was having a second child. Janelle informs him, the kids feel very alienated from you. Cody concludes their coyote past talk by saying he doesn't understand why his children don't want to spend much time with him and then blaming it on jealousy and gossip. Sister wives drama hits boiling point as Cody and Janelle's feud over Coyote Pass gets ugly. The latest Sister Wives episode is giving fans the showdown they've been waiting for. This Sunday, Cody and Janelle Brown met to discuss Coyote Pass, one of the last ties keeping them together financially and emotionally. But things took a fiery turn when Cody found out Janelle consulted a real estate lawyer. Feeling betrayed and infuriated, Cody threatened to sink Janelle if she continued with a lawyer. Is this the final nail in the coffin for Cody and Janelle's relationship? Let's break down all the drama in this roller coaster episode and explore what's really going on behind the scenes. The Rocky Road to Coyote Pass How Cody's Dream Turned into a Nightmare From the beginning, Coyote Pass was supposed to represent a fresh start for the Brown family, a symbol of unity. But now it's become a battleground. Here, We'll go back to the origins of this land purchase, examining how it created tension among the wives and turned Cody's dream into a potential nightmare. Janelle's legal move, why she's not playing games this time. Janelle made a powerful decision by consulting a real estate lawyer before meeting with Cody. What does this mean for her stake in Coyote Pass? This chapter explores Janelle's motivations, her growing distrust of Cody, and why she's protecting her financial future. Lover boy Cody's misread signals, the reconciliation that wasn't. Cody arrived at their meeting thinking Janelle's choice of a secluded restaurant hinted at reconciliation. His excitement quickly turned to frustration when he realized Janelle wasn't interested in rekindling romance. She was here strictly for business. We'll delve into Cody's reaction and the irony of his misplaced hopes. Cody's confession, why he's done with polygamy. In a shocking turn, Cody admitted he's not interested in maintaining relationships with his ex-wives. This chapter discusses Cody's confessions about being done with Janelle, Mary, and Christine, and how this revelation has shattered any remaining bonds within the family. The betrayal factor, Cody's frustration with Janelle's independence. Cody seemed to feel entitled to Janelle's loyalty, even after years of neglect. Here, we'll explore Cody's expectations and his resentment toward Janelle for consulting a lawyer and putting her children's needs first, a sign she's no longer willing to cater to his wishes. Cody versus the kids, the fallout of pandemic protocols and estrangement. During the pandemic, Cody's strict rules led to a massive rift between him and Janelle's children. This chapter dives into the tensions surrounding the pandemic, how Cody's decisions affected his relationships with his kids, and how it's impacting the family's dynamics today. Janelle's financial stakes, why she needs Cody to buy her out of Coyote Pass. Janelle made it clear she wants to move forward and put her money elsewhere. In this chapter, we'll cover her financial interests, her desire to secure her future, and why Coyote Pass is one of the final ties binding her to Cody. Cody's financial moves, how selling his Flagstaff home may impact the wives. Recently, Cody sold his Flagstaff home, which fans believe could leave Janelle and Mary at a disadvantage. We'll examine Cody's financial maneuvers and why Janelle and Mary might be running out of time to secure their shares of the family assets. Fans weigh in. Is Cody trying to cheat Janelle and Christine out of their money? Cody's recent decisions have sparked outrage among fans, with many speculating he's attempting to leave his former wives financially disadvantaged. This chapter will highlight fan theories, concerns, and reactions to Cody's handling of the family finances. Sister Wives Alliances Why Janelle and Christine are closer than ever Since their splits from Cody, Janelle and Christine have grown closer, supporting each other through this challenging time. Here, we'll explore their strength and bond, how Cody's behavior pushed them together, and what this new alliance means for the family's future. Janelle's Children how Cody's neglect has fueled their resentment. Cody's neglect of Janelle's children has deepened the divide between him and his family. 
We'll examine how Cody's actions have impacted his relationships with his kids, especially Garrison and Gabriel, who have publicly expressed their frustrations. Christine's departure, the catalyst for Janelle's bold stand. Christine's decision to leave was a turning point not just for herself, but for Janelle as well. This chapter will look at how Christine's departure inspired Janelle to reassess her own relationship with Cody and prioritize her own well-being. Legal battle brewing? What would happen if Janelle and Cody go to court over Coyote Pass? Janelle's legal consultation hints at a potential court battle over Coyote Pass. We'll delve into what this legal dispute could look like, who stands to benefit, and how it could impact the future of the family. Will Janelle's lawyer fight for child support too? As Cody moves on from his wives, questions arise about his responsibilities toward their children. In this chapter, we'll discuss the possibility of Janelle's lawyer pushing for child support and what that could mean for Cody's finances. Mary's financial stakes, could she be left out too? Mary is still legally tied to Cody, though they're estranged. We'll explore Mary's position, her financial stakes in Coyote Pass, and what could happen if she too decides to pursue legal action to secure her share. The fan verdict. Social media reactions to Cody's threat to sink Janelle. Cody's threat to sink Janelle if she gets a lawyer was a major red flag for fans. This chapter will showcase the overwhelming fan response, including their thoughts on Cody's behavior and support for Janelle's independence. Cody's view of loyalty. Why he feels betrayed by Janelle's choices. Cody has made it clear he feels betrayed by Janelle's legal consultation. Here, we'll analyze Cody's views on loyalty and why he expected Janelle to side with him despite their deteriorating relationship. Sister Wives Endgame Is this the beginning of the end? With all the tension and financial disputes, fans are left wondering if Sister Wives can survive much longer. We'll explore what's at stake for the family and whether this could be the end of their shared journey. Janelle's new beginnings, how she's reclaiming her life after Cody. Despite the drama, Janelle has shown incredible resilience. This chapter highlights her journey toward independence, her goals for the future, and how she's moving on from her past with Cody. Will Coyote Pass ever be developed? The future of the land that tore the family apart. After years of planning and disputes, fans are questioning if Coyote Pass will ever be developed. This chapter will speculate on the land's future, the family's unfinished plans, and whether the dream is truly over. What's next for the Brown family? With tensions at an all-time high and no clear resolution in sight, the future of sister wives remains uncertain. Will Janelle pursue legal action and finally get her fair share? Will Cody's manipulations backfire? Only time will tell if the Brown family's legacy can survive this latest fallout.